everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Vile Files. Going deeper edition. Welcome. Hey. Thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, Allie and Amanda are with me. Jeff Perla is our guest today from the new hit show, The One Who Got Away. The One That Got Away. The One That Got Away. <laughs> one Who? One That Got Away. Mm-hmm. It's such a small difference. The One That Got Away. But I find it endearing when you say the wrong word. Also, we have some meaty discussions about uh, Chris Evans. JLo and uh, Ben Affleck's marriage. And, uh, uh, Chloe surrogacy Chloe talk. Surrogacy. Leave Chloe alone. <laughs> really, the, Chris Evans touched my heart. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He's now on your Mount Rushmore he's of on, guests. He's on my Mount Rushmore of guests. Ooh, do you, is it just him and Harry Styles right now? Or do yeah, we have. I don't feel like the need to like fill it out. Okay. Without. Yeah, you want to save real estate. You got yeah, two I more. Don't, I don't want to like, I just want to be like, oh, pick someone that I don't like know. And, like, you don't want to take someone off the mountain. That's like hard. after yeah. hearing Chris talk about wanting to find love, I I would re- I'd love to talk to him about his 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 love life and like more important like how he I think he he probably has some thoughtful things I, he would never share with me, but I would be curious. <laughs> but we get into that. Um, Europe was fun. Yeah. What was I liked? We liked we liked Paris much better than London. How many days? And this was nothing against London. Love love the people in both cities. Truly delightful. Really enjoyed people from Paris. I enjoyed the people from London. The cabbies in London, delightful. The food, no, I'm sorry. I, not so much with the food in London. London to me felt like like another cool city, like a New York that was more spread out like in LA, but like where Paris truly felt like a, a mythical place. It yeah, like felt, a snow globe. Right? It, it didn't feel like another city. It felt like a really unique, special place. The food in Paris is much better than the food in London. And uh, What did you eat when you were in London? Just like a lot of different meats? Yeah. Like there's steak in London, not for me. Did not you do fish me. and chips? No, we should have because I, well, Natalie doesn't like fish. So like I, I bet their fish and chips would have been fine because I like, I, I regretted that. Yeah, I just it just wasn't. And then the shop, we did some shopping in both. And the shopping is good in London too, but it was really good in Paris. Good. What, what, what was your big purchase? I bought a suit for Wells and Sarah's wedding. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I got these pants and I got this shirt. I got these pants in London. I got this shirt. In, uh... When is well, their the wedding? Well, the is a, one of my favorite stores and it's a Paris brand. So I bought some things at the Couples. Are you good about throwing out clothing when you get new clothing? I'm okay. I'm definitely not a hoarder for sure. I definitely like to get rid of things. I could always be better. Because I'm also like, I have a tight rotation, you know? You do, yeah. You, you know. wear very similar. You rewear. He's a big rewearer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, uh, you yeah. have your favorites. Yeah. Really lovely time in Paris. Is but, there a highlight or like special moment that stands out the most? Well, we had dinner at Giraffe, which was highly recommended by a lot of people. And uh, we met, my uh, my our friend Alexa is staying in Paris and she met a guy named Elliot. And we hung out with the two of them all the days. And it was great to have like a tour guide. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got us into draft, which was a dinner outside the Eiffel Tower. Really good food. And then we found this other like little cafe outside of our hotel that had the best fucking chicken ever. Ugh. I'm going to so miss it. Just so. But I, I found the advice I got from Alexa when it came to like dealing with people in Paris was just say, walk in and just say, but. Bonjour, 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 whatever it is. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> and just like attempt, that's it. That's just all try. You, that's yeah. all you need to do is to say hello or hi, and greet them in France, and then be like, yeah, I don't, that's all I know. And then everyone like everyone was so nice. Mm-hmm. But you got to extend the olive branch. It's like you had it like- You, you can't, can't be the just, entitled you, American. You can't walk in and just say, what's up? You know, just say bonjour and-, and, and English. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, act confused when they try to talk to you in France. And then everyone was super delightful. Mm. That's really pleasant people. And like the people in London were really sweet. Nice. I'm scared of the French. They were very kind. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. I'm, in- I'm intimidated by them. They seem so like chic. I, I really enjoyed their company. Okay. Yeah. A ringing endorsement for the French. Yeah. Been a nice time. A lot of engagement expectations. <laughs> a lot of ring emojis in your on your yeah. posts. Yeah. But you've always said you wanted to propose in a place that you could easily revisit for anniversaries. Yeah. I'm definitely not a let's take a trip yeah. and get it. It's not my style. But Nick, 
to take your your serious girlfriend after your Instagram caption for the New Year is big things this year, and then to take your girlfriend to Paris, I do think it's pretty warranted. I- I'm not upset or frustrated with people who suggested. Sure. I'm, I'm like, I'm not mad at it. And I anticipated. Did you acknowledge it with Natalie at all? No, you said there was a slip up with like her nails or something. Or was that a yeah. different occasion? She was like, what? <laughs> yeah. It was that was kind of funny. Uh, we were definitely on the same page leading up to the trip. Like, but prior to us leaving, there was we were doing some traveling, and I don't remember this conversation, but she made a joke: if I'm going to propose, whenever I'm going to propose, just to make sure that her her nails look nice. And so when we were talking about leading like leaving for our two week kind of trip of everything because i was i was i was flying to wisconsin ahead of her she had to go visit her dad and then and so i was like oh well on that day when you pack just like go get your nails done or something just like take the day and she goes huh i was like what and for like a good 10 minutes i was like what are you talking about you're like you know what don't get them done <laughs> uh, yeah then it became this whole Rough thing them up. but uh no we were very much on the same page but yeah i anticipated people might assume have some expectations yeah, I'm just on a like f- flies, and I gotta say, it just seems like everyone's in fucking Europe on Instagram. It everyone's just, in Europe, just, big Europe summer. I don't know. It doesn't feel like uh, it's not for me. I guess he's gonna do it the Prince Harry way, making a chicken down on one knee. Except for it's gonna be taco night or meatballs. But Natalie doesn't like meatballs as much as I do. But taco night, no. It's just in a meatball. <laughs> it's in a taco. Uh, anything new with you, ladies? I tried out an aerial class this weekend. I'm the most sore I've ever been. Okay. Um, it was like. Will so- you do it again? Yes, a thousand times yes. Because it's so. What's the what was the highlight? Why why, why do you want to do it again? Because it's like there's something like flying, like being in the air, and I think it's challenging. Like I I played a bunch of sports growing up. Like I feel like it's been a while since I've. What was your main sport? Volleyball. That was like my. I almost played D three volleyball at U Chicago. That was the only reason I like saw Northwestern is because they were doing a recruiting thing there and my parents made me. Um, but it was very, it was just exciting to do something new that I'd never done before that was like, and I was just like, it was very artful and it mm-hmm. felt like an event as opposed to like, I've tried a bunch of different like Pilates bar. So I feel like it's one of those workouts where you're like, you kind of forget it's a workout because it's yeah. more of like an activity than anything. And it's, it requires so much strength. Oh my God. Yeah, it's it does. insane. We had to do circus training when I was at Northwestern. That was part of our curriculum. It really burns. Circus training. <laughs> Part of our theater <laughs> education was we had a unit for circus training. We we went to a different place called the Actors Gym. And it was like, yeah, we had to do full circus. And I was really good at the trapeze. And I had like long nails at the time. And the woman who ran the program was so serious about it because she like grew up in the circus. And she was watching me do the trapeze. And she was like, those nails would never fly in the circus. And I was like, well, good, because I'm not in one. Like, I was like, I'm not trying to be a trapeze artist. Sucks for me. Can't join the circus. Oh, no. Uh, well, we have a great episode for you. Uh, so we'll get to it. Don't forget to send in those questions for all things Vile Files, whether it's Ask Nick or texting office hours at asknickacastmedia.com. Cast the K. You know the drill. Let's get to Jeff. Let's get to Jeff. And uh, for all you sports fans out there, if you're uh, interested in uh, hearing me and my wonderful co-host, Lindsay McCormick, talk all things sports, join us uh, today uh, or every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern on the uh, Live Amp app. Go into our bio. We'll put it on there. Especially all Packer fans, as we get ready for training, fan, uh, training camp, we'll be talking a lot of Packers. And as the season approaches, we'll be doing a lot of post-game shows and things like that. So check it out. Join us. No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you've got bills to pay. Good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days early with direct deposit. That's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and generally just feel good about your money situation. But Chime is more than just getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account. Money today is worth more than money tomorrow. That's just a fact. Time value of money. So... Make your money worth more with Chime. What would you do if you got your paycheck two days early? I would go straight to an acai bowl place. (laughs) You look disgusted with that answer. (laughs) So what are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. Get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at Chime.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is Chime.com slash V-I-A-L-L. 
Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank, N.A., members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Jeff, welcome. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Well, uh, I'm great, man. How are you feeling after you're, uh, you're popping your reality TV cherry? I got to say, I was thrilled to watch it because I was so nervous to like watch my mannerisms or like how I talk or like if I like kissed awkwardly. I felt like that was something that always happens on The Bachelor that I was very mindful of to not kiss awkwardly. Not kiss awkwardly. Were you, yeah. are you, did you close your eyes? Because that, that's something that people often criticize for in The Bachelor is they, uh, yeah. which I, 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 I defend because I think more people kiss with their eyes open than they realize. And I don't think I've ever come across eye open kissers. Uh, I think everyone's done it. I don't think everyone always closes their eyes. Well, kissing. that's the great paradox is that if you know someone else's eyes are open, your it's eyes like, are open. Mm, right? I, that would be so creepy to watch. But you don't look at, you don't go. You if don't, your eyes are open kissing someone, then where are you looking? You're looking at them, right? I, I don't, I don't know. But I think more people <laughs> do it than, than they realize. And they're just not being filmed doing it. I guess, yeah. I I did practice filming kissing. You did practice. Make, yes. you, you filmed. I wanted to make sure my neck yourself. wasn't sticking out. I was like, let's do a little practice run of what I look like. I mean, you was, looked good. Maybe I should have done stuff did like that. Did you ask for like on. a volunteer, like a co-star to film these tapes with? Listen, when you're gay, there's always volunteers, you know? There's <laughs> a plethora of people who are down. Relatable. <laughs> uh, so the, the one who uh, got away, I am, I'm fascinated about this, this concept. Um, did you believe in this idea, the one who got away? Like, well, how did you end up on this show? Let's start there. Yeah, so the casting company was, like, reaching out multiple times about, like, every possibility, it seemed like, for two years. And what I just kept saying, every possibility? like any dating show that was coming out, they're like, Jeff, we want you, Jeff, we want you. And I was like, no, no. Like, I just never wanted to be like trash on television. Like how that did didn't this, interest how me. Did this how did this company get a hold of your name? I guess when you post your butt on Instagram a lot, they find you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's the, the secret sauce. Yes. Post that's, your butt. And that's how they'll find you. So they reached out and they said, we think you'd be great because you could just like, see if you have a connection with a misconnection and i thought the concept was like really interesting so i went through the casting process took like six months and i ended up going on gotcha so it wasn't like that you had this like thought in your mind of people from your past prior no no and how did how did they find these people because some of the people on the show i i just assumed that when you went on the show like you made a list of like a bunch of people you're like i don't know i wouldn't mind like seeing what this person's up to. But some of the people who came through the portal, uh, people didn't remember. Yeah, I mean, I did give them a list, but like you were also on the list and you didn't show up so that they didn't really follow the list. You know what I mean? So it ended up being people that like my mom referred, my sister referred. Oh, like I see. Like they called my best friends. Like they asked who they thought would be like good for Jeff. What about like the people who like, one per person was like, yeah, I slid into your DMs a while back. Like, how did they find that person? Yeah, I don't know about that one. That they have not, a whole team though. They go in deep. They dove. Yeah. They dove real. I mean, they found someone from my confirmation. Uh-huh. I love that. That was great. It was something. Yeah. <laughs> and you, but you seemed like there, you, you, you didn't end up with that gentleman. No, I did not. You found love though. Mm -hmm. oh, how long was the filming process? We filmed for like last summer and it was kind of like I had no idea. Like I feel like, for example, The Bachelor, right? You know that you kind of like it's kind of repetitive. I walked into this process. I had no idea how expect, eliminations yeah. were going, where I was sleeping, how many people there were, when the portal was open or closed. And so I would just be like, sometimes sleeping, my lights would turn on. They'd be like, Jeff, come on, we're going to the portal. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> how long did it filming take, though? Like six weeks. Six weeks. And how many, how many people did you meet like through the portal? Seven or eight, I believe. So how did you and Alex, what was it about Alex that made you, re and, and remind the audience how you originally met Alex before the show? Yeah, so Alex was, is my best friend from New York. So we do pretty much everything together. Oh, he's he your was, best friend? Yeah. 
Yeah. So he has like the keys to my apartment and I left him with the keys when I went to film to like water my plants and like take care of like my Airbnb situation while I was gone for a couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden when I saw him, it was like a whole bunch of emotions because I was like happy to see him. But I'm also like, who the fuck's watching my apartment right now? So did he like he came to like profess his love and shoot a shot? Pretty much. But to be honest, I did meet him on a dating app like three years ago. Sure. And then, but then you became friends. We hooked up for like two months. It was great. And then he started becoming friends with like all my friends. It was a lot of pressure on like, you know, 25 year old Jeff. And I was like, we're just going to be good friends because this is too much for me. And then he found that you were going on this one that got away. And then he was like, no, wait, I'm the one who got away. Mm-hmm. Swooped in. And he swooped in. And do you feel like this is like, the start of something really special. Like, do you think? This I mean, is I won't forever? say the star. It's been a year at this point. Like, I feel uh, like I'm that's like, right. Good. Yeah, I guess the year's been done for. So you're still together. Yeah, like I feel like we're in a good spot. Like I feel like stable for the first time in my life. Like I feel like we're both on the same page. Talk about everything. So I'm not like worried about what he's doing. I could do whatever I want. Like it's just like a good relationship. And then there was some drama with post people posting their relationships i mean i wouldn't say drama i would just say like some came off more authentic than others right what do you mean by that (laughs) who did who didn't come off authentic i just feel like there was two of us that came off the show in In relationships relationships. and the ones you and uh Alyssa. Alyssa, who i gotta say that was a reality tv shocker yeah she was great well i don't think anyone anticipated Alyssa being the only one else to end up in a relationship as the way things started for her. You know, I think when you know what you want, you just, you go out there and find it until you find it. Do you, th- but you don't think, you think that relationship isn't as authentic? No, I love her. But? All I'm going to say is that the other ones who are not in relationships, who decided to post that they are working on things or maybe whatever. Oh, everyone else. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so everyone else. <laughs> And and then what, what did they post? <laughs> you got to look on Instagram, but basically it was just it felt unauthentic to me. That's all I'm going to say. Did you say something uh, on Instagram? No, I chose You're to not respond now. to the group chat. I just let everyone do their talking so they, they, and I was they, like I they heard it here first. Sure, yeah. So Jeff doesn't think <laughs> Then and what don't you think is in, is inauthentic? They're working on themselves. No, I'm just saying, like, I think if you're going to talk about, like, where you stand in a relationship, right? And then all of a sudden you can't tell your friends who you've been on this experience with, like, what's going on. You can't give a solid answer. Then, like, how do you expect other people to understand what that answer is? What if it was maybe they just didn't find their person on the show? Then say that. We love transparency. who Who is your least favorite person on the show? That's tough to say because There's I feel so like, <laughs> I, to be honest, I would say in the beginning, I was like definitely Alyssa and I was like, stay away from her because she was so much in the beginning that I was like, I didn't know if she was an actress. I was like, how did they find this girl? And then she ended up being like my best friend on the show towards the end. Okay. So she really came around. But who, who didn't? Until episode two. <laughs> <laughs> who are your least favorite people? Who came on for me or like the other? Oh, no, your castmates, the other leads. I just feel like you click with some and then you don't click with the others. So I will say my like bestie leaving was Alyssa. And then I would say my second would be Nigel. And then your second bestie. Yeah. 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 Vince. The other th- three were yeah, great. We're sort of ranking them. In their yeah. own capacity. Have you kept in touch with any of the other men that you dated on the show? All of them. You're, you're friends with all of them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's nice. New York's a small circle, so I feel like half of them came from New York, so I see them out. They come to brunch. One of them still like works at my drag brunch because the one was the drag queen, so they still perform at my brunch, and it's great. And tell me more about this brunch. Um, on Sundays at Amore Loco, I host a drag brunch, so I hire the drag queens. We take lots of shots. Very cool. I let people do body shots off me for a dollar, and we call it a day. It's a great gig. <laughs> have, and have they always been taking body shots off you for a dollar or is this post reality TV? Um, pretty much if they ask, I'll let them do it, you know. Would you let people do body shots off you for a dollar? Probably not. Okay. No. 
five dollars. I don't know what my price would be. Okay, think about it. I just feel like it'd be a little sticky, and mm. yeah, it's not my thing. But like, I think it's great. It's like I think you're garbage for yeah, doing I was it. Like, just say the word trash. Go for it. Just <laughs> say it's trash. That's all I, I'm saying. I wouldn't do it, but it's you yeah. Know, I'm not. I'm not here to judge any any body shot taking. Yeah, it's great. Wait, is a body shot where they pour it into your belly button? Mm-hmm. Oh, for it's even like some button. of like. Like sometimes in the midst of brunch, we'll do like a game. But sometimes and I'll you like can have a real shot flies, glass. And I'll put the real oh. shot glass in the guy's fly. And then I make people like have to take a shot out of the guy's fly. Oh, wow. So then you just so pretty much you guys should come to this glass. brunch. This is yeah. in New York? <laughs> yeah. Where can people, people listening in New York, if they want to come support um, your brunch? Where, where? Amor Loco. Amor Loco. On mm-hmm. Sundays. Sundays one to three. One to three. Mm-hmm. Could we start like a Monday late sometime so Amanda can <laughs> I can go to this brunch and then fly back <laughs> really drunk? <laughs> Do you believe in the one that got away concept? I thought it was super interesting. And the only reason I'm going to say yes is because all of us have a different storyline, right? Like mine was my best friend who I never looked at like that. But after having like such deep, serious conversations with just the two of us and not our whole friend group involved, it can make you look at people in a different light that you never gave them a chance. And then Alyssa, for example, I mean, who we all were in high school is not who we are now, right? So, I mean, you might have a connection with that person if you give them a second chance. What advice would you give to people from a, from a one and got away standpoint? So, like, do you think there needs to be... Well, your situation is yeah, interesting because it was like, it was your friend... But do you think the one who got away applies to like exes? That's a tough one. And I feel like I'd have to say probably not, depending on how you broke up. Because like if somebody cheated on me, I probably wouldn't go back to you because I just would never trust you again. But if we broke up because like they were moving to L.A. and I wanted to stay in New York, but then I ended up coming to L.A. and we were both in the same city at the same time, maybe. So it's like a misconnection. I would say it's about misconnections. Do yes. you guys have it? Well, you're in love. Do you have any uh, ones who got away? Like, not necessarily like, like people in your and like that you wonder, like what what if you know? Yeah, because I feel like there's always like the like right person, wrong time mentality. I don't know if I have any that come to mind. Because I every every reason that I feel like things have ended are still reasons now. So but with, like with the locations and stuff, if that makes sense. But even if you are in a relationship, I think you still think back on somebody in your life. Totally. Who like you wish you gave that extra chance to because like now you don't think about it as much because you're in a relationship. But I think you could be in a relationship now and still think about someone. Throughout my like single life, like a couple women who I, you know, it usually started with me being having a crush on them and then me pursuing the crush and then like we got together at some point and I just rem- like, I remember really wanting to like them and w- great people, wonderful people, beautiful, but like for whatever reason, it just felt like I just, and there were, there were a couple of these women where like we, we tried like a couple times to go on dates and like, it just felt like it just wasn't, it wasn't a vibe. Like I really wanted to like them because I thought they're like you know like on paper so to speak you know but can't I, force a connection and it just it just wasn't there but like other than that you know like it, I'm also like re- like the one who got away I've always I've been reluctant to like embrace because I think sometimes people will fantasize about some person and then fill in the gaps with what they don't know about them and they always fill in the gaps with like good things you know like how they might treat them. No one's like filling the gaps with like, you know what? They probably, they're probably flaky. <laughs> you know? They might not brush their teeth. Yeah, they're, they're probably sloppy. Yeah. You know, it's always, they fill in the gaps with like really romantic things. So like sometimes the, the one who got away concept, I think is, it can be a little, uh, a potential like pitfall. I, I think it's maybe with friendship a little bit more authentic when there's actually like some kind of connection, even if it's not in a romantic lens like through a romantic lens I think that's a little bit more like okay well at least you're developing your relationship and getting to know them better especially if it's a scenario where they were dating someone at the time and so you knew it would never progress beyond that but I I could see that as being kind of like a garden where love could grow 
eventually. Well, one of the things I loved was the people who came on, I already knew. Like, I wasn't necessarily talking about, like, oh, what do you do for work? Or, like, how is your parent? Like, I know all these things about these people. It was more just we come from the same town or we both live in New York or whatever our situation was as to how we know each other. So it was more just kind of, like, picking up off that base we already had. It wasn't just, like, a, what's your favorite color, you know? Yeah, there was, like, you you guys had a baseline. Mm-hmm. Where, who were you nervous with some more than others? I would say the thing that surprised me most was that, like, for example, I came out when I was 21. So some of those people who came on, I knew as straight Jeff. So when I saw these people, it kind of brought back those like closeted, nervous, awkward emotions that I had when I was with them because I haven't seen them in all those years. So I was surprised. I think that's one thing I wasn't prepared for is the emotions it brings back by seeing people from a time frame in your life that you were maybe like insecure or whatever it was. And so that was the trickiest part for me. I can only imagine, like if I met someone back from high school, mm-hmm. like, you know, if I was on the show, like, did you feel like you had to like bring them up to speed with who you have become? Like you almost were like, oh, just like, you know, like remind them because like if you meet someone from high school you might worry that they remember you as the same person from high school. And like, I, I would remind, I would think to myself that you could, I could see people wanting to, with that feeling you described, yeah. to like want to like, yeah, I guess like really bring people up to speed. Or did you not feel any of that pressure? I don't think I felt that pressure because I felt like the dates were more so like interactive or something was happening that you kind of just got to get to know each other from the activity you're doing. I didn't feel like I needed to be like, hey, by the way, like, I don't go to a club and have tequila in a water bottle anymore. I'm more mature than that now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, we're, like, past all those things. Well, on the topic of exes and ones who got away, like, should we talk about, well, I just feel like it's so apparent, like, the the wedding between J.L.O. and Ben Affleck. That is a one that that got away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20 years later. I feel like that's a real success story for ones that got away. Not to be a cynic, but my first thought, like, I... They've both been married multiple times. Mm-hmm. They both have kids. Mm-hmm. And I've never been married. So, but like, as I've gotten older and, you know, I want to get married and all that fun stuff. But I, I got to say, like, as I've gotten older, I've, I've become a little bit more cynical about marriage. And so I, I find, I, like, to me, it's kind of like, I'm surprised they got married. Do you think it's more like once you get to a certain age, why are you getting married? I I think it's cool that they still believe in marriage. I'm I'm the cynic in this. I'm just Mm -hmm. more like from a pragmatic standpoint, like what is it about getting married that they feel like they needed to take that step? Like they've both have had a handful of marriages that didn't work out. Not it would have made sense to me if they were both like, this is great what we have. Like we're in love. Mm -hmm. We have like, kids and and we have our like a blended family yeah it's it's all like we, we, they both financially thriving yeah <laughs> you know like they're but like what what is marriage doing for that relationship maybe she was sick of her last name she changed that real I quick know. i was shocked i was shocked yeah jennifer affleck <laughs> Jarring. It, it doesn't, doesn't sound jarring. right. It doesn't it does, sound right yet. And also was jennifer garner also jennifer affleck oof Ooh, maybe at one point right I don't know. She I don't know. If she his changes, his, changes her name. Yeah. Him and the no, I mean, and, and uh, couldn't be happy for them. And I hope they 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 prove to the world that marriage can be after how how many times a, in a beautiful thing. But they are my my f- hopeful inspiration because you know as as this world dating world evolves and and we become enlightened daters, like the historical importance of marriages has become less significant with mm-hmm. four people it's especially from a non-religious standpoint it's like a legal document yeah you know so and you don't even save that much on taxes everyone's like oh it's a tax it's like you really don't save much it's not really worth I, it i'm just people really say flying the wall i want to know like why did, like it was ben just did ben surprise her with you just get down on one knee did they talk about it was 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 j-lo like well they got the marriage license on the 16th can we still call her j-lo now yeah. Or is it J- she has to be J-Lo. Or is it J- J-F? J-F? <laughs> J-Lack. 
<laughs> J-Lack? J-Lack. <laughs> J-Lack. <laughs> J-F. But congratulations to them. Yeah. I'm I wonder, here for it. But. I wonder if part of the getting married is like, especially because it was a relationship that was so intense when it existed in its first iteration, if there's almost the sense of like, we finally did it. Like that thing that we never got to before being marriage and like getting engaged and all of that. Like, I wonder if there's a little bit of like, we just want to like fulfill this thing because it's been such a long time coming. Maybe. I mean, I, yeah, maybe I, it was more I wanted, monumental. I'm for really them. curious what the reasoning was. She texted her ex, happy birthday. Is what I will say. <laughs> she, she did. She did. Yeah. But even like Kim Kardashian in their last season on Hulu was saying she was like, yeah, I'd like to get married like one more time, like kind of hinting at Pete. But that would be her fourth marriage. Well, this fourth is wedding. J-Lo's fourth. Yeah. I would just be pissed as like an attendee if I had to go to a friend's wedding for fucking times in a decade and be like I gotta give you a gift again yeah, I already got I you gotta the get fucking another Le outfit Dutch oven. I'd be like you don't get to just keep having weddings because you want me to like I, that's horrible I don't know but like if you're J-Lo yeah, one I, of the perks of being J-Lo is people being more than happy to attend as many <laughs> weddings as she has yes. Weddings. <laughs> yes we're like, all waiting for our invite J-Lo's like you know what don't come <laughs> I think it's cool that they did like a Vegas thing, though. It didn't feel like it was over the top. I actually love that they did a Vegas. Yeah, thing. yeah. very fun. Yeah, I, I, uh, I would really be curious what who started who who broached the subject. Was it Ben or J Lo? Who do we think? Well, they got engaged back in April. Did they? Yeah, mm -hmm. with a green ring. What My do you guess think is going to say Ben. I feel like Ben probably was getting back to her. At together with her and said if we're gonna do this i want to marry you we're not just dating to date because what's ben been doing the past couple years prior to dating j-lo um being sad over <laughs> superman movie uh i'm not sure but uh maybe what else we got amanda what else do we have we got chris evans i mean what a sweet man I mean, first off, I didn't even know he talked like that. Great I question. I, th I, great, thought, great question. I thought he might have been a little stoned. Yeah, for that sure. That made me uncomfortable. What? <laughs> what made you uncomfortable? His voice. <laughs> oh, I thought it was... He's like, that's a great question. I thought it was so sweet and endearing. It made me love Chris Evans. He, he, he became the Mount Rushmore of like guests I'd want to have on this show. Right up there oh, with Harry Styles. I was yeah. going to say. I love like the little video montages people make like he's helped um, like a lot of women at award shows like go up the stairs if they have like a long dress or he helped like Betty White up the stairs like it's no, very but cute. That's I, cute. Yeah. I feel like I really believed his answer and like I believed like this whoever who was whoever asked the question he was doing it sounds like you know one of those like interview sessions where he's sitting and it's like uh, he probably does like 15 interviews in a row. And it was like, I think he was like triggered in a good way by this question. And he, he knew that he was giving this person a very generous answer. But it felt like he was waiting to answer this question and knew that whenever he answered this question the way he did, obviously it would become the news that it would, it would be. But I, 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 like, I heard this vulnerability in his voice. Like, and I really, it really made me feel for him. And like, you don't, wouldn't think to necessarily feel for Chris Evans, but I can only imagine how how hard it might be for him to be challenged with trying to like figure out who his person should be because like not in a cocky way he must he knows that how desirable he is to so many people that must make it incredibly scary to to wonder who you can trust that loves you for you because like he must know that whoever he gives an opportunity to date or fall in love with, even if it's like a peer in the, like say the Hollywood or acting community, I would imagine that like he has a lot of trust issues around like who he could trust. And, and maybe he doesn't want to date another actor. You know, like, like maybe there's a lot of people like in Hollywood, it's just like, yeah, I don't know if I want to date someone in this space. I feel like everybody wants to date their equal or someone who will like push them a little better. You know what I mean? Like maybe he's meant to be with like, a real estate girl, you know? Somebody's but that's what I'm saying. But like, if you're Chris Evans, he maybe wants to, right? But like, how do you trust that that real estate person, woman, can hold him accountable and isn't just saying what she thinks that Chris Evans wants her to say? Like, I, I, I'm certain that there must be some of those doubts of, of truly being able to trust that because of how he is perceived in that world. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what his like how he's picking his partner, who he chooses to spend his time with or 
what his type is and, and is, is it someone outside of the industry or inside of the industry. But I really, I really imagine the struggle. I really, I really think it's a sincere struggle that he has. Well, something I think we talk a lot about on the show is this idea of like when you really want partnership, like how to what extent you can kind of seek it out for yourself versus you need to be open to it and let it find you. And so I'm curious for both of you, if you were going to be all three of you, if you were going to be laser focused on finding your person, what would that mean for you? I think for me, I tried to do that and completely failed at it prior to going on the show. What were you doing? I just felt like I think like we all have the worst thing in our hands at all times, which is your phone. And like the next best thing is right around the corner at all times. Like I could go on a great date with somebody, go home, just like pull up grinder before bed. And then the hottest guy messages me and I'm like, oh, he's hotter than this one. And so you're just constantly playing this like kind of like jumping frogger type game that you just like keep hopping around until before you know it, five years later, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm turning 30 and I'm still single, you know? In times where you've been like looking for a long-term partnership as opposed to now when you absolutely have it, what did that process look like? Well, that's the thing. Like, I don't know. I, I would be curious to ask Chris like how he's going about being laser, laser focused in that, right? Because the question that was posed to him is, in your personal life, what are things that you're laser, laser focused about like you are at work? You know, like being laser focused in his acting career, I'm, you, I, could, I can imagine a lot of things that he, that he does to be laser focused, the studying, the building a character in his mind, et cetera, et cetera, like doing the, that type yeah, of work. Yeah, like the workouts, like it's a lifestyle sure, you know, thing. the physical aspect of taking care of his body, being an act, you know, that laser focus. But like when it comes to kind of almost to Jeff's point, like in a relationship, like it's such a balance right like sometimes the laser laser focus is like checking yourself to not like give in to all the options that you have and like really seeing it through with someone you're going on a date with i think laser focus is like it's it, in a finding a relationship has like is like a combination of having the right amount of patience and self-discipline to like say no to temptation but like also self-discipline's the good but word. also say yes to really seeing it through with with people yeah like open-mindedness but yeah. not in a highest it's like mentality. it's like a, it's like a having that balance of the right open-mindedness and the right discipline and combine at the same time it's 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 really hard i'd really i'd really be curious how chris evans is going about that laser focus and maybe it's just him putting it out there you know, sometimes just putting it out there and saying, this is, I want this for myself, I think is a great place for people to start. Yeah, because it's totally, he could have been like avoiding it before because obviously he has yeah. so many other things going on in his life. Yeah. So, yeah. so for some people, laser focus means being like, fuck, I'm going to do the thing where I engage and like try. Like Blake yesterday was just like no focus on relationships. He was. He's laser focused on saving animals. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes you can turn it off. If you get out of a bad one, you're like, I want nothing to do with this again. Yeah. No, but like, you know, listening to him speak, it really sounds like how he's like, what, 38, third, late 30s? Or, 41? Right. Yeah. So he's at the time in his life where like he's obviously he's, has all the success one could imagine having career wise, probably in a good place where he's like probably just having a family is a still like a, a staple feeling for people to want to have. Totally. And I feel like Chris Evan like still like has his roots, you know, where I feel like he's, I don't know, I don't know the guy at all, but I feel like I would imagine if I got to know Chris Evans, that like hanging out with him for a week, let's say if I were to shadow Chris Evans, let's say I were to like be a reporter and do like, I bet I would, I, he would show me more about him from like who he was from. Like I bet, I, I bet I would meet friends from back of the day like you know what i'm saying i feel like he, he still, still has holds the on hometown vibe to it's like, so true uh, like who he was and who he is and i'm sure he's become a different person but i still think he hasn't lost that and i still think that stir very much today bleeds into his like it has everyday life. And I think it's very much true of everywhere. Like I'm sure people who have hometowns from all over the place like still relate to that. But I think I growing up in Boston, I think there is very much this just like like deep loyalty yeah. to your people. And I think you can see that. Yeah. And I think it's like this moment of him being like, I want someone to be loyal to in this way. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of loyalty, the antithesis of loyalty, Tristan Thompson, Chloe, <laughs> surrogacy news. 
So just to be clear. That came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. Just to be clear, this was, so the surrogacy happened in November, the birth of Tristan's baby from third party December. From him like slinging his dick around? Yes. I would like to see what it looks like. His dick? Yeah. Is it Googleable? <laughs> it's got to be good if he's getting this many people pregnant, right? How are you not using protection? If you're having That's an true. affair and you're dating one of the most public, like just like famous followed people in the whole wide world, how are you not wrapping it up? Also, and I'm not advocating this as a safe form of protection, but like pulling out. <laughs> but like, th- my point is, is, he's clearly not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's hard enough to, it's so many people have a hard enough time trying to get pregnant in relationships where there's no goalie and they're just, and he just can't not get pre- people pregnant. Gets He's it every time. Clearly, like, this is, you know what I'm saying? I'm not advocating as a safe form of protection. I'm just saying he's clearly not doing that either. His seeds of life are. His seeds, his seeds of life <laughs> are, are spreading. Very, Full, full, of life. full of life. Yeah. So I guess what the big question is. It's like, well, people are slamming her. Do you think that's fair? Well, even last week I said, I don't think it's, uh, yeah, let, let Chloe live her life. She's, you know, what, in her 30s? Mm-hmm. She might be totally content. So, because I think, you know, I think when you're younger, right, and you have your life in front of you. And as we all have, we've all been in their early 20s before. And I don't know, like, in, and where you ladies are in your life, I don't know. But like you, you know, when you're, when you start dating out of college or like you, you know, you, you, no one imagines getting married or no one imagines getting divorced or broken up with or cheated on or all these things. And then life happens to you. Right. And then as life happens, you start accepting that like these things are going to happen to you your priorities change. So for Chloe, like she has the, her beautiful daughter and she maybe has had these relationships, but right now it would make sense to me if right now Chloe's priority is building her family. Mm-hmm. And She's not, always wanted siblings and, and, for And true. not about like finding a man, a man that fits into this certain, like, you know, that the convenience of being 19 and 20 and thinking I'm going to find my life partner and then we're going to have a family and we're going to be happy after after is very nice. And I think everyone wishes that for themselves, but it's not always the case for everyone. But she gave him a second chance and took it very, very slow. Yeah, fine. I'm just saying whatever. But right now, Chloe's priority, I I think, is is having this family. And if you're Mm going to have, she clearly has the means and the finances to have a child with anyone she wants. And she's not even, she doesn't have to like physically get pregnant. So like, it's literally about like what seed of life. (laughs) If you don't know what we're talking about, listen to yesterday's episode. (laughs) Uh, But whose sperm do you want? Mm -hmm. And why not have your daughter have a sibling that is their full sibling? You know, like I have no problem with it. Like her priority is the family. It's not about love. Like why she, 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 should she get it for uh, the seed from a random some random person yeah because and there are plenty of like half siblings step siblings who are super close sure uh, not uh, to take is, anything away from half siblings but if you have the means to a hundred percent and it is kind of like it's the guarantee of like because your siblings are the one people who really know the yeah. crazy like the mm-hmm. one people who understand and have that same level of emotional attachment and involvement so and it is kind by of by all a, accounts he's a good father and Maybe that's a bigger prayer for her, for her kids, than her own personal life. You could argue it's a selfless act on the part of Khloe Kardashian. So before people are like criticizing her love choices, why don't you just like let the woman live? Let her live. Be grateful let, you're not living it. <laughs> yes. Amen. Let her spend her money the way she chooses. Yeah. So I say more, more power to her. They live a bizarre life. Interesting to as long say as the least. As long as they're happy. I'm, I'm happy for them. Our caller is here. Oh, texting office hours. All right. You ready for this, Jeff? I'm excited. I don't even know what we're doing. Let's roll with it. <laughs> All right. We are we are giving people texting advice. You'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. How's it going? Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm 25. Hi, Jordan. How can we help? I need help constructing a text to this guy I met a little while ago. Uh, we don't live in the same hometowns. We live pretty far away. And I'm at the point where I'd like to see him in person. And so the best way to Have you ever seen that, him in person? Yeah. Okay. You've met in person. Yes. How far are we? Is he he a plane right away? A car right away? It's either. It's eight hours. Oh, wow. 
Okay. Oh, an eight-hour eight hour drive. Yeah. It's far enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. It could but go like, either way. It's a quick, it's a, it's a puddle jump. Right. Exactly. You know, like if you're in Milwaukee, Minneapolis, it's like, okay. All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and you met on a dating app? Yeah. So walk me through like what happened when you first started talking. So he was in my hometown for a wedding and we ended up matching. And one night we decided we'd go get some drinks. So went out about two and a half later. We had a really good time, easy conversation, went our separate ways. Didn't really think it'd go anywhere since we don't live near each other. Um, But we kept in communication for now seven weeks, snapping, texting. We FaceTimed. Do you remember who kept... So after the wedding weekend... Mm-hmm. Do you remember who sent the first message after he returned home? Yeah, he did. Okay. Okay. And so um, we've, yeah, we've kept up communication. It's been about seven, or actually it's been a little over seven weeks now. And so I'm kind of at the point where for me to keep investing, uh, I need that like face-to-face in-person thing. And he has a very time-consuming job, so it's easier for me to travel so I don't know how to be like, hey, do you mind if I come like eight hours away and come see you? Um, so it's that's kind what of you really where want I'm to at. do here is like you just want to like see the guy again. I, yeah, because I mean, you can get so much with texting and yeah, FaceTime, yeah. whatever. But to really see where this could go and progress maybe into something, I think I need more of that in person. Sure. Um, but so to be that. clear, you're so just to sum up. You hung out with this guy. He was out front of town. He went back home. You guys kept in contact. There's some like romantic, friendly banter, but like you haven't seen him since that weekend. And you just kind of want to see the guy again and, right. and hang out with him to assess if there's something more. But like right now, you're just like, why do we keep texting one another? If we're not, like, right. And you guys, and he has, he has never brought up the idea of seeing you again. Not really. So I, after a week of us talking, I kind of did what you did and I just put it out there. I said, here's what I'm looking for. Um, On his profile, he put, he didn't know yet. And so I was like, I know you put that, but here's what I'm looking for. If that's not what you want, that's fine. I'm just not going to keep investing. On his dating profile he has, I don't know what I want yet. Yeah, that's what he put. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) So I wanted to like make it very known, this is what I'm looking for. So that way, if we were only a weekend, so I didn't want to sure. overinvest. And he had said that he wasn't, he said, I'm not not looking for a relationship. But since his work is so time consuming and we live far away, it kind of complicates things. But he's really loved getting to know me. So it's kind of a half-assed answer. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I don't, don't really know where to take that. I don't mind his answer in that context. Because from his point of view... He was in town for a wedding, decided to go on a dating app and figured out, I'll, I'll see if I can meet a girl here. And mm-hmm. maybe to, maybe for him, met surprisingly met like somebody he really enjoyed that he was like, I don't know, I'll keep talking to her. But after one nice weekend, it doesn't necessarily mean he's like, oh, I, I want to be in a relationship. So like after, you know, after a week you checked in and he, you know, not really much changed after a week. Now, if you're going to keep talking, I agree with you. Like, you guys should, someone needs to make a move. Yeah. I'm all for it being you. <laughs> uh, these texts you sent, attorney guy, I love it. Uh, what, <laughs> give us some context in terms of what are, what are we reading? Like, what are, is this like right after you guys met? No. So the first one I had sent, it had been a week, and that's how I said, here's what I'm looking for. Gotcha. And his response is there. The second one was him initiating a FaceTime. And because he's not the best texting responder, so he kind of acknowledged that and offered FaceTime. Okay. And That's... then the third text was me hinting at coming to see him, but he never responded to it. But he's still been snapping me and What's he snapping communicating. You? Um, well, like it'll be a one time he have or a couple times he's helped me organize his office with new photos or um, things he's doing on the weekends or things at night, okay. and then we'll message and whatever. All right. Can I just ask why don't you just suggest I'd love to come see you? Like I so that's I it's been on my mind to just spit it out sort of thing basically. Yeah. But I sometimes I know he moves slow and. 
I think I'm at a respectful point where it's been seven weeks and it's probably the net, like it's not uncommon um, to ask this, but I don't want him to be like, okay, here's this girl who's like, can I come see you and drive all this way and hope you give me time and whatever. If he's maybe not having the same vibe and I don't want to think, cause he moves slow. I don't really, I guess. So I don't want him to like run off. You said you have a lot to say, Jeff. I mean, I would just say to start, um, this guy kind of just sounds like he's playing the game. I'm not going to lie. Like he doesn't sound okay. like the nicest guy. I mean, let me start off by asking this question. I hope you don't mind. Did you hook up with him after the first time you hung out? No. Okay. You did so, No. So this is just strictly like emotional texting. Just had a couple drinks. Yes. So, I mean, in my situation, if I'm continuously talking to somebody, what I would probably end up doing is maybe this comes off a little mentally ill here, but I would be like, hey, like, I'm going to a friend's wedding. Like, do you want to come? Like, almost mm -hmm. invite him somewhere so it's less like I'm coming to you or like, right. why are you not coming to me? Be like, hey, like, I actually have a plus one to go to something. I think you'd be a great person to come with me. So I think for a guy's perspective, it's less aggressive because it's like, oh, this sounds like a fun blank, whether that's like a getaway weekend or a wedding or whatever it is, that I think he might respond well to that because he seems like he loves to socialize, meet new people. So maybe that would be a good next step. In Do you my have opinion. a wedding coming up? I don't. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I tried finding like a more excuse of like a girl's trip that I could get away for a couple hours one night. Um, Listen, I still I, could do that. I don't but. no. I mean, I think if you had a wedding coming up, that would work. What about like a concert mm -hmm. or something? Well, I also don't think there's just anything wrong. Like you've been texting with this guy for how long now? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. You didn't even hook up. So like there's clearly like some there's a mutual interest there. Yeah. And my point of saying that is like it doesn't I don't think that like I feel like in people in your position, they're always weir worried about like, and you can hear it in your voice, like, well, like he's, I, I, you know, he says he moves slow and he doesn't know what he's looking for. You don't want to sound too pushy. And there's always this fear from people who are excited about someone and wanting to produce someone is sounding crazy. I don't want to sound crazy. I don't want to sound like, like, oh, like, is it crazy for me to come visit you? Like, is that how, like, you're what you're worried, right? Probably. Yeah. Yep. And I'm here to say, like, you're not sounding crazy for wanting to, like, visit and get to got, get to know someone in person that you've been investing seven weeks of your life texting with. It's mm -hmm. actually more crazy to keep doing this. Right. And, and not, like, get any further answers. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, he can always say no, but I think a little bit of assertiveness about saying, I'd love to, I, you know that long you're going to be talking about? I'd love to come. I'd love to come and get to know you more. I mean, yeah. Grant, what's done mm -hmm. is done, but I, I would have done that before you started like checking in about like his relationship plans after like, a, after two dates, you know what I'm saying? Because like, mm -hmm. it, it's not shocking to me. He, like, honestly, I think you got a pretty decent answer for a guy you went on two dates with and not have, and, and live long distance. Yeah. Because he, you know, what's he gonna say? You know? In worst cases, no. <laughs> but even if he was like, oh my God, yes, like I love you, like you, that could have set up a whole different set of red flags, <laughs> you know, because yeah, he doesn't know much true. about you either. Mm -hmm. So you, to your point is you're just trying to find more information and the easiest and most efficient way of doing that is like plan a weekend trip to go visit him. Doing that will get your answer because if that, if he's avoidant to that, then like he's not worth your time. Like right. if, if, if the idea of you going out of your way to drive eight hours and book your own hotel room, which you would absolutely book your own hotel room, yeah. even if you yep. want to hook up with them, book your own hotel mm -hmm. room. And then the first night you sleep in that hotel room, the second night you can fuck. But like <laughs> the first night, like you, you set some like boundaries and, and, and don't let him like pay, like don't sleep at his place, nothing. Even if it goes great, be like, nope, going back to my hotel room. But before you even get that, if that scares him off, then he's not worth your time. I'd also right. go with a girlfriend or a friend because at least I think if you're there and you're alone in your room, 
you might get a little more crazy because you're going to be like texting him nonstop that it might be better to have somebody else there who can like no, occupy your time need be so you're not up his ass. No, I think you no. if uh, I kind of disagree. You're going to go to see him. Well, Wait, and the, I'm he fine lives... going off exploring on my own too. Like that's not. Well, yeah, I'm you could be independent, but like offers. I don't think you need to pretend that you're not going to see him. I think you read. Right. I mean, the text I think you should send. I mean, let's send it now. And it's like. Let's write it. Let's write it. <gasps> Oh my God. Hey, exclamation mark. You know that long weekend I, I was talking about? I was about? thinking about <laughs> like, I, I've i really, like you just say, I didn't even go with the whole like I really enjoyed talking no, to you. No, I think you I'd literally to, say. I'd love to see you again. I was thinking about coming. Like how? Like how about I'd say I, come I have visit? some I'd time off on these dates and say I was thinking of coming to visit. Yeah, I, I would love to see you again. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking coming up for a weekend. Like, what do you think? Like, yeah, totally. Yeah. And then you could worry about planning it after yeah. he. I like the what do you there. think? Yeah. 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 And no laughing, crying emojis. Yeah, no we're just going to no send emojis, it as no is. No emojis. Yep. <laughs> LOL. Ha ha ha. Read it back to me. I have, hey, I'd love to see you again. And I was thinking about coming your way for a weekend. What do you think? Yes. Perfect. Love Perfect. It. Send it. Ready? Three, two, one. Send. Did you do it? All right. Yeah. Right. Yay. <laughs> and listen, if he, if he like, if he's kind of cryptic and like non-committal about it, like that's your answer. No one needs to chase a man in the summer. That's for sure. <laughs> You tell him, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Good point. So then if he is cryptic and whatever, do you give anything of like, for me to keep investing, I need this? Or do no. you just leave it and I think go? you just cut him off because think- like you, your presence is a gift. Like you, like mm-hmm. having someone to like talk through your day with who's interested and who cares about you, like that's a value add. Like you are providing value in his life. And like mm-hmm. if he's not going to meet you with like the kind of value you're looking for, then like – yeah. You know, it's like it's Sweet it's not it. free for you and you're not at the point in this relationship that you neither of you like owe it to one another to explain yourselves like mm-hmm. true mm-hmm. so i think you just be like we're looking for different like you know and you can be very civil about it be like yeah just like right. you know we're looking for different things so i don't know that it's the best use of time to keep I, chatting I, I would be surprised like if he is cryptic about it now what like more likely he'll probably say yes and then you go and then depending on how that weekend goes, I think, you know, if you go up there, your mindset should be to get to know him. Right. Right. Like don't, it'll be easy mm-hmm. to get caught up in it and have like, cause, cause you're going to be like playing house a little bit potentially and like living in a city and you're going to hook up potentially, but like, you know, and then after that weekend ends, that's when you have to like reassess about, yeah. you know, was it just like, cause you are, you aren't, you just sent him a message saying, I want to see you. Non-committal. Mm-hmm. You're, he's not, you're not throwing any expectations his way. He can easily say yes and get some like fun free sex out of this. <laughs> and so that is the risk that you're taking. But like you mm-hmm. just want to get to know the guy. And you don't have to like sleep with him, obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just choose to like say, hey, like if you if you have a nice time, mm-hmm. I would end the weekend by like, I'd like to do this again. Okay. And then maybe after you guys do that three or four times, then you're in a position to then say, I've really enjoyed these five or six weekends. I know enough now to say that like you're worth me investing in a long distance relationship. Do you feel the same way? But you start by saying how you feel about him and then let him respond. But you're not even there mm-hmm. yet, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what he says. Perfect. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate right. it. Good for Let you. us know what happens. <laughs> I will. So I feel right. like we should Bye, wait. Like, yeah, he's not going to respond right away. No. He was a slow texter. No. Never do. Slow texter. Um, okay, please let us know. All right, let us know. Very invested. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I will. Thanks, guys. All right, take care. Thank you. All right, bye. bye. How's it going? Hey, it's Chelsea. I'm 30 years old. Live in the Bay Area, and I've been. Gosh, in the dating life, it seems like forever. I've been talking to this one guy not for very long. And I'm just at a point where I just don't know if it's worth texting again and trying to see if it goes somewhere or just kind of leaving it. We went on two great dates. We 
had good conversation. He was really engaging, asking me questions over text messaging, really just coming on really strong at first, which I'm not really used to, but also was kind of hesitant towards. And after the first date, um, which actually I did what you did, I did a FaceTime before we even went to dinner um, to make sure we even vibed. Uh, We both, after the first day, decided we want to see each other again. He had to go away for a business trip. And he ended up actually calling me and FaceTiming me while on the business trip, texting me every day, just checking in with me, seeing how I'm doing. Came back. We decided to do a date in my town um, because he doesn't live near me. It was about an hour north of me. And he came down here. We had a great time. He asked all the great questions, ended up having sex. And after that, it just kind of, his effort just fell through. And he went away for a little bit. And I'm not the kind of girl that's going to be like, hey, how's your trip going 24-7? We just started talking. So didn't see the need to. And then I'm going on my trip. I was going on a 10 day trip to Bermuda and I wanted to really enjoy my time there. So I felt, you know, screw it. I might as well just text him, see where we're stand. And he responded back. But of course, as you probably can see, it was just less effort. Okay. Which which is for first I'm seeing. uh, I don't know which ones you're seeing. It looks like how's your trip going was first. Yes. So I texted him. This was right before my trip. And I said, how's your trip going? So it was like that. End of his trip. This is after sex. This was after sex. Okay. Yeah. A week after, about a week after sex. Gotcha. And you asked how his trip's going. He wrote super fun. It's been a blast. How are you? And then I have a drafted text. Yeah. I drafted a text. Wasn't sure if I liked it. Changed it. So you'll see in the next part. I actually changed what I said to more minimal. <laughs> Didn't oh, want I think to that was smart. I love that you screenshotted this. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now you get We're, to see the backstory yeah, of what love, girls love, do. Uh, you showed your work. It's like <laughs> full points. <laughs> really generous of you. It's like it's like you knew you're going to come on. All right, so you were going to send. I've been really good. Oh, glad to hear. Where is your last destination before coming home? I mean, that would have been fine. Yeah, I. You know what? To be honest, you're just so in your head, and I hate texting. I'm the kind of girl that's don't text me through the week. Just call me once a day. Let's just see how your day goes, and that's it. I, I personally hate texting. You so sound I'm not like my kind of girl. <laughs> well, hey, you can find my number through Nick if you want it. <laughs> I got it right here, but I I don't think the the parts would uh, attract. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jeff is also in love. Yes. I, yes, I do know. I I do know. I watch you guys all the time, and I do know um, everything. I <laughs> oh, love it. Um. All right. So, I mean. He still was res- so. The thing that's okay, the phrase that is coming to my mind, and I think everyone is going to shoot me down and say, hell no. But I feel like some jokingly calling him out and being like, I didn't know you were a hit it and quit it kind of guy. Ooh. Like, kind of just be like, honestly, because like it's, that's what he's doing right now. And I yeah. think just like being like, let's call a spade a spade. It just, it really, I don't hate it. It just really depends on what she wants. The re- no, Long, the, like oh. the rapport and his sense of humor. It just really. Well, he's definitely, he's got a sense of humor. He's pretty sarcastic. We've been pretty blunt with each other Okay. already. You know, he's called me out on things and I've called him out on things. Um, just kind of have that chemistry with each other. Uh, I mean, I've already said to him, you know, cause we had sex and I was like, don't worry. We don't like, don't stress about me being all weird, which I wasn't. Why did you say that? Uh, cause he'd mentioned before about a few times that he had gone on some dates with some girls and how they either frantically kept texting him and calling him. And then one girl was stalking him. So I just felt the need to throw that playful thing of like, don't worry, I'm not going to do that to you. But like, how did that conversation even come up? Yeah, this is where it gets interesting. So it was actually before we had sex. He even asked me the question, what would you do if you got pregnant? What? And yes. And especially with times right now. With what a everything weird going, dating question. What a we Exactly. While we're at my apartment, like before we go to dinner and knowing we're probably going to have sex. And I just kind of froze. I was like, well, you know, with everything going on in the world, it's kind of a weird question to ask me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just like, 
<laughs> I was After like after recent events like yeah I, yeah and you know I said I am in my 30s so of course you know I want kids but no I don't want your baby so don't worry like yeah uh, how, like I'm not good. trying to how did he respond you? to that he was like well you kind of hesitated are you sure and I said listen look me in the eye I do not want your babies I kind of hate this guy yeah it's it was an interesting question i've never been asked that before um what would you do if yeah and for him to be like you hesitated it's like yeah because you asked an insane fucking question my guy i'm sorry yeah i was taken back by your bizarre fucking question yeah Yeah, i was like i was like excuse me i mean he's done he's done strong things like that since we first started talking he also had asked hey i found this great place in the north bay you know, I don't want to ruin the chance for us to continue talking. Like, is it cool? Is it okay that I move there? You know, I want us to continue. And my response was, yeah, get the damn place. I, I We're not anything. I can't control Wait, you. Be what happy. do you like about this guy? Honestly, I, I now you're making me think maybe I shouldn't. Um, I just liked the honesty and the rawness about him. I have always have been going on these dates where these guys don't ask me questions. They're too nervous. I come off as a pretty strong, independent person. And a lot of men just kind of like, whoa, okay, she doesn't need me type of attitude. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't intimidated by it. And I also set my intentions pretty straight with him at first. And most guys, of course, run for the hill. And all I said to him was, you know, I'm not here to waste my time. I, you know, if you don't feel the same connection with me, please let me know. And we'll move on. That's that's all I'm asking of you. And he was like, "Yeah, no, I completely agree." How I often? How how said. early do you say that? Um, pretty much around the second date. I don't really waste time anymore. I guess, which I guess is bad. But when you've no, gone I mean, on so I, many I love dates. that you're setting kind of clear expectations. I, you know, like listen, I think there's. I I would I would all I would only say to you is like maybe be open to like. You know, I, I would I don't want you to have this like two date rule that like you yeah. like throw this out there after every second date. Not every two dates are the same, you know? And so oh, I agree. I and, definitely I definitely feel it out. This guy was like yeah. the second date. It felt it felt appropriate because like I said, he was coming on real strong. Okay. I, I wouldn't I don't want to say love bombing because that's just putting a label on something, but there was yeah. just a lot of strong comments coming out of him that I just felt the need to just say, Hey, this is where I'm at in my dating life. Well, I don't know if it's going to work, but the more you talk, the more I'm on board with Amanda's suggestion. Yeah. Like I, I kind of, if, if he is this sarcastic guy and you guys have built a relationship off of this kind of like snarky back and forth, then he seems like he you might. You know, you could text him. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> And the baby is yours. Uh, <laughs> Can you pregnant. imagine? You're a dad. <laughs> I thought we'd get a response. I don't hate it. Minutes. I'm pregnant. Definitely would get a response no. off that one. And I, well, here's what I don't like the, I never thought, I never took you as a hit or quit it guy. I, I would more like it is like, just say, just call him, hey, Mr. Hit it and quit it. Or something like just, you know, like I'd rather have you just be even more like, like give him a little just like be like now that you've hit it is this you quitting it or something (laughs) yeah like i never thought sounds like yeah yeah yeah. like a hurt vulnerable yeah yeah Yeah. i don't want you to sound hurt i want you to sound i want you to sound like you're fucking with him yeah because i'm definitely not hurt by it i'm just more of like tell me what it is yeah not like not i don't like this gray area you know you just wanted to hit and quit it great good job you know clap to you let's let's move on type of thing versus um you know this this middle ground which is always i think where women and even men have that difficulty of like where to navigate of where to go next well what would you say your goal at the end of this is like do you want to go on like another date with him is that the goal i would be open to going on another date with him just to see you know if that really is the situation and you know like the truth is i don't really know him right if you say, if I say I knew him by second dates, then something's wrong with me. But I would like to see if, yeah, there is another connection part there that I'm not aware of. But if he is ends up being the hit it and quit it type of guy, then I'm not wasting any more of my time and can give that energy to somebody else. So how can we draft this text that includes this hit it and quit it kind of joke <laughs> um, while still coming across see. as like the whole idea we're, we're agreeing is that we're. We're saying this to a guy who would like 
rise to the challenge, so to speak, that you yeah. would be, he would find it kind of humorous and it would, he would almost like, like the sass you're throwing his way. Like, do we pair it with plans? Like, what is the, yeah, like, mm, yeah. Hey, Mr. Yeah. Hit it and quit it. What are you up to this weekend? <laughs> I yeah, kind of love, love that. Yeah, I, I actually love think that. that's perfect. <laughs> I kind of like that. Okay. Brilliant. So what did you, what is it? Sorry, hey, Mr. Hit yourself. it and quit it. What like, are you up to this, this weekend? weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. I think that's good. See? Cro okay. We work as a team. <laughs> I love it. Both sarcastic and to the point. I think he'll appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, it's it, it'll picking. get a response. That much I'm mm -hmm. certain of. <laughs> it'll get a response and something that I'll have to definitely follow up and let you know what the what the verdict is. I'm just, yeah, I'm and just And then if you go on a date, to... I'd love for you yeah. at some point in the date, be like, can I ask you a question? Why the fuck did you ask me that question about getting pregnant? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that was unhinged. I, I really should. I really should. Because at that moment, I Don't ask I it like that. Just be like, say. I'm really curious. It was, a, it's, a, it's a random question. Yeah. Like. It really is. Do you always ask women you on dates with that question? Like. Also, I, you don't have to answer this, but like, were you having, was there some form of protection, birth control, et cetera, involved? So well, that's this is before thing. he so, asked it before he even had sex. We had it before we had sex. And I already had said to him, you know, he had asked me, you know, where are you at in protecting yourself? And I said, you know, this is what I do. Yeah. And he was like, oh, okay, awesome. Respect it. You know, I'm also about protection. And I said, great, because that's how I am. And we're just hanging out on my couch watching the UFC fight. And then all of a sudden that kind of popped out of his mouth. And I just, while watching UFC? Yeah, wow. we're watching the fight. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to start a fight. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, sounds kind of hot. this one down. <laughs> yeah, I would like for you to get more information okay. about that question. It definitely will. And I honestly think that, like, if he, assuming you guys go back out, I, I think that this you sending this will guarantee you a, a second date. And if, if, he, if he plays coy, just you got your answer. But if you go yeah. back out, I think if you approach it almost like a first date, ask him okay. a ton of questions, see if he re re responds in kind, mm -hmm. but like put him on the spot. Like you're almost kind of like sussing him out. No, I definitely will. I'm definitely feeling like I need to know the background of that story. Of what the here's the thing. That like, question. I don't know. You've heard me talk about this, I'm sure. But like, if you're going to have sex that early on, you're having sex in hookup culture. It 100% changes the dynamic of a relationship. Yeah. Like the curiosity of what's it like to have sex with you is out the door, right? So like now you have to invite a new curiosity that's going to keep people like interested in wanting to get to know you. Is a, like the, it's like that's the downside of of hookup culture, you know? Yeah, is that it, it does take that out. So like like really keeping him on his toes and part you know, peaking his curiosity through like you know your questions and and letting him know that you're still trying to figure him out. And with that kind of like, it's, it's your way of kind of take gaining that power, whatever power you think you might have lost by hooking up with him, you're gaining it back by like letting him know. I would love for you to let him know without saying it, that you're still figuring him out. Yeah. And that you haven't decided about him without no, being I like, I haven't decided about you. And, yeah. I and, mean, that's, that's the truth. Yeah, but let, like give that vibe off to him. Keep us posted. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks so much for your advice and uh, have a great rest of your day. All right. Best you of luck. All take right, take care. care. Bye. 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 What a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah. yeah. What would you do if you got pregnant? I huh. one time had someone say it was in the middle of hooking up and he said, no moments of pleasure are worth bringing a child into this world. What? <laughs> that is so creepy. <laughs> that is unacceptable <laughs> what and you continued no because oh, he like pulled say. out for that exact reason just stopped was done like refused no to continue like he had yeah. like a come to jesus moment <laughs> yeah he, yeah he had a come to he just blue <laughs> balled jesus himself moment. yeah literally oh my Dude, god were you like all right good to know robert Frost. and i literally <laughs> i was so done i was like let's just i was at that point i was already i was just like i'm so ready to be done and we were like just 
you know, packing up our lives, putting clothes back on, being ready to go. And we were drinking wine. And so I reached for the wine thing and my finger like hit the stem a little bit. So it kind of went like that. And he goes, you might want to sober up. And I was like, you well, can leave now. And, Thank you oh so much. God. Get out. <laughs> in, his, in his defense, this was, uh, we've all heard about post not clarity and he was. But he did not. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't thinking clearly, and he's just saying this crazy ass shit. Yeah, yeah, that's how it's coming. Yeah. Wow, e. seeds of life, seeds of life. Mm -mm. Uh, Jeff, th thank you so much for coming. Thank uh, you, it's been fun. Please uh, let the people know where they can follow you. And if you haven't seen uh, Jeff's love story unfold, you can check it out on Amazon Prime. The one who got away. Yes, uh, you could follow me at at Jeff Perla on pretty much everything. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, all the all the things. All right, and mate, check out the uh, the one who got away. It's uh, if you love uh, if is you it, love love. Is it the one that got away? The one that got, got away. away. The one who got away. it's it's Whatever. so they'll I'm find sorry. it. They'll find I'm it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's good. Attention to detail. It's also going to be available on Freebie on July 29th. Okay. So you can get that? it on two platforms. What's Freebie? It is there sister kind of site streaming site that is free so you don't have to have oh. a prime subscription oh. to watch oh lovely mm -hmm. so if you don't have a budget you can watch there okay. like me thanks for <laughs> listening guys don't forget to send in your questions for all things the vile files at asknick at cast, cast with a k we are back next week you'll find out <laughs> you'll find out bye Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.